So now this is uh, what the analysis we did today was for the case assuming uh, uh, single junction set, right? But you might as well as think that why, why I mean, why restrict myself to one material? Let me make a multi-junction set where I would make it out of these three materials where each one is optimized to absorb for a particular part of the spectrum. So I've divided in terms of the color, so my lowest frequency would be blue, highest energy. Then is my green, which is medium energy, and then red, which is the lowest energy. And the way I'll place this cell is I'll place the highest band gap on the top, so it absorbs the highest energy and it lets the other one go through, and then the green one absorbs. Yeah. Uh, what's the cross like how you calculate it for a uh, I know you say it passes through, but it's always yeah. some phonons that created a light interaction. Is it, is it like closer to 50% higher transmittance? So actually there are more than uh, phonons created. There's a lot of reflectance that happens at the surface too. So there's, I mean right now I'm just assuming everything just gets through, but there's a refractive index change over here. So, uh, some amount of it is reflected back even though you in my intended it to go down. So, uh, yeah, so there's, 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 there are losses there, but you know, for just deriving the maxim maximum efficiency for today, let's just you know, assume everything goes through. Okay? So, uh, I'm going to take this case where uh, you know, each of these cells is, uh, is optimized for that particular uh, wavelength, right? So, what is the efficiency I get in this case? So the way I'll do this analysis is similar, you know, to the way I did the one junction analysis. That is, assume that each of these cells it absorbs everything above the band gap, right? So whatever is left over from this guy will now go to this guy, and he'll absorb what is above his band gap, and he'll also let everything which is below the band gap of both of these would go through, right? So, and I'll take, individually I'll take the amount of radiative recombination from each of them, right? And that should just give me the efficiency, right? So, people like me, that, that should give me, you know, the overall efficiency or is there a catcher when you make these multi-junction Yeah. Yeah, so this is something, you know, take into account when you do your uh, homework problem that, so each of these cells will give you an individual IV curve, right? But these cells, since I have, I've, in the homework problem set I have specified is that they are, you know, connected uh, through each other, they are essentially connected in tandem. So the current through first cell has to pass through the second cell. So you might think that you know you have this individual IV curve and you just optimize their efficiency, but since they are connected in series, there's only one single current which which is going to pass through them. And so, say cell uh, 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 two over here might have a higher current, but the amount of cell is going to, the the amount of overall current in the system is going to be limited by the cell which has lower current. So your efficiency in that case would be, your voltages will add up, so your combined voltage would be V1 plus V2, but the current would be limited by the cell uh, which is, you know, which has lower current among the two. So you have that uh, uh, reference code and now, you know, you know, you should be hopefully be able to do how to uh, optimize the efficiency. I'm going to give you the numbers. Uh, reference numbers anyway. So if, if you take a single cell, you get 41%, right? If you take a two cell, you get four, if, if you take one cell, you get 32%. If you take concentrated sunlight, you get 41%. If you take a two junction cell, you get 42%. If you take a three junction cell, you get 48%. If you take a four junction cell, you get 52%, right? So what do you think, I mean, if I go to a, since the infinite junction stack, I should be able to get 100%, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 
So if I go to infinite cell, in fact, it's less than what Ben said. It's only 86%. So we are out of time today, but when when we get back on uh, uh, Monday next week, I want to go through thermodynamics and go through, you know, how what we did today in terms of band gap. You can do the same thing, but in terms of thermodynamics and estimate that same uh, same uh, limit and just to show you, you know, it's not uh, we'll do this on monday but it comes out to be the same thing around 86 percent and um but we'll keep that for next week i was hoping to do it today we are but we are out of time <coughs> and both of us have i have office hour today you have tomorrow uh, if you have questions on the problem sets or the class in general, feel free to drop off. Uh, CIS building, Paul Allen building. You know, electrical engineering, right? Yeah. Packard building, the building behind that. CIS or, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I know. Uh, 320.